Hello everyone, and welcome to another Adobe InDesign tutorial specifically targeted for the, st for the computer layout team at the Old Skona School Magazine. Today, we're going to be looking at how to cast shadows and use gradients in order to make your work seem more professional and three-dimensional. So, the first thing you want to do is create a new document. Just a page will work. And in here, we need to find a two-dimensional object that we'd like to give a shadow to, to make it seem 3D. So, I've got one right here, um, just in my downloads folder. Here, I've got a picture of Pikachu. We all, we all love him. So, here we go. Just make him a little smaller here. So, the first thing that, uh, that you have to decide is where do you want your light to be coming from? Because there's always some shadow right here, uh, and right here below the ear, I'm going to make the uh, light come from around here which means the shadow will fall behind Pikachu on his left. So the first thing you have to do is you have to click on Pikachu, go into Object, and select Clipping Path. Uh, click on the Object, yeah, Clipping Path, Options. Here, you can switch type to Detect Edges, and then hit OK. Now you see that Pikachu himself has been selected, even though the image itself was originally just a square, or a rectangle. Now what we want to do is we want to clone Pikachu, make another copy. So we go right click, copy, and then paste in place. So now we really have two Pikachus over top of each other. You'll notice that the tool, the tool we're using has switched to this white arrow key. And then we'll use that to click on Pikachu and select this, the, this top copy with the cutting path. We want to right click and scroll down to convert clipping path to frame now again you'll notice the picture appears to have changed now we're going to with this white arrow click and press the delete key you'll now see a blue X go through the center of your image but only will it lie on Pikachu You'll notice that if the X goes through the entire image, that you've done something wrong. And this can most often be remedied by just ensuring that you've used the white arrow tool to select, um, to select the area inside your cutting path. So now we have pretty much a blank, transparent uh, spot for an image that's shaped like a Pikachu. And so what we want to do is we want to put a gradient in that. And that's just... Um, that's just where you go from light to dark very gradually. And you can access the gradient by this toolbar on the right where you see gradient. There are two types of gradient. A linear gradient, which is what we'll, we'll be using, where it progresses straight from a white, or in this case white, through a gray to a black, with all areas going straight from one color to another. The other um, choice you have is a radial gradient and this is basically gradient expanding from the center of a circle for shadows we mostly want linear so that's what we're going to use here you can customize how how to work with your gradient you can make um, you can switch the endpoints as well as switch where the uh, where the color change mostly occurs shadows are start dark but then usually get quite light but they do get gray so we'll just move, maneuver this around a bit. So something like that. Once you're satisfied, what you can do is d click on the gradient preview bar and then drag it onto your image. You'll now notice that Pikachu has become a gradient. But remember, we copied Pikachu. There's, so there's still a normal image right behind that. So we're okay. However, not all shadows look like that with a gradient going from left to right. So what we want to do is to go into the left toolbar and select the gradient tool. This allows us to drag an imaginary line over our gradient and then change the direction or the flow of the gradient. For example, you can change it simply by dragging. You'll notice that wherever your line ends up is where the darkest part of the gradient will be. So we'll want to have the darkest part be around Pikachu's head, or sorry, around Pikachu's foot more rather and the lightest part be near his head and his ears, because those are the less dark parts of the shadow. Once you're satisfied with that, we want to do what's called feathering. And you can fe fe feathering an image simply just makes it so it's a little bit blurry around the edges. So we go into effects and basic feather. What you can do is check the preview box 
which makes it so that any changes you make in this um, in this window will automatically display on your image. So, for example, if we increase the feather width, increase the choke percentage, something like eight, and any noise if you want, and ensure that co corners are diffused, then you'll see you'll start to see outlines of Pikachu. And that's exactly what we want, because most often, you're, the shadow we want to create isn't going to be larger than the object itself. And so we click OK. So now we've got this shadow, but we want to make it go, you know, look, be falling back from Pikachu, because light will, wherever light isn't, a shadow will be created. So what you have to do is you have to go ensure that your, um, your shadow is selected, and go to the right side and use this free transform tool. Using this allows us to manipulate the shadow in multiple dimensions. Now this is very this this next step is extremely particular and precise about what you have to do. So if you are on a Mac, click on this top middle square and hold the mouse down. Then press the command button. If you're on a PC with Windows, instead of pressing the command button, press the control key. Now, with that one, uh, with the mouse button hold down, you can move the mouse into any and move the shadow in any direction you want. You'll notice that because we did this, wherever Pikachu's foot was stays, which is exactly what we want. So we'll say something like this: pick an ankle, do exactly what you want until you until you're happy with it. When you're ready, release both the key and the mouse button. Of course, this still isn't what a shadow exactly looks like because we've obscured a little bit of Pikachu. So to remedy this, right click and go to a range. Um, oh, sorry, you might have to select the black uh, mouse button. Right click, arrange, send to back. Now you'll notice that we see all of Pikachu and its little Pikachu shaped shadow. Again, you can mess with the blurriness and the feathering until you get something you like. When you're done, you can always export it as a PDF. And in fact, this usually looks quite good once you've done it to a PDF. So here, let's access it from here. We called it Pikachu Video. There we go, there's our Pikachu. And you can see how the, the foot has the darkest part of the shadow, and it fades as you go out. Obviously, this wasn't a, um, a fantastic job because you can't see the exact shadow of the tail, but that can be worked by reducing or increasing the amount of feathering you do, in this case, decreasing it. So, that's pretty much how you make shadows. Um, it's a, it's uh, really easy to do, and it gives your work a nice little sense of being in three dimensions. So, that's it for now. See you next time.